seems all anybody can talk about this week is Miley Cyrus and her performance at the Video Music Awards. I didn't see this performance live. I actually first learned about it when a seminarian who had seen the story on the morning news came to me and told me about it. In our conversation, he said, what gives me a sense of hope, though, is that everybody seems to be condemning this behavior from the mainstream media to internet sites I've seen. Everybody is saying that this was over the top and inappropriate. Now, while that may give some people a sense of hope, I don't really hang my hat on that because I've seen all too often where a behavior is condemned only 10 years later to have that behavior become mainstream and normal. So think back, for example, to Madonna in the 80s and 90s and the way the people reacted the same way they did to Miley Cyrus's video, saying this was overly sexualized and inappropriate, only to have the stuff that Madonna did in the 80s and 90s become mainstream, if not tame by mainstream standards today. So I don't put a whole lot of stock in that. As I was researching this story, I came across a blog that I thought asked an interesting question. How does somebody go from being a Disney star, Hannah Montana, to this performance that we saw on the video music, at the Video Music Awards? I thought that was an interesting question. The person said, what it shows is how manipulative our music industry is, that this is what Miley Cyrus thinks that she has to do in order to advance her career, rather than to use her musical talents and gifts. I think this person was on to something. I think they captured accurately what Sebastian Moore's theology of original sin states. Namely, Sebastian Moore says that the origin of sin, or that sin originates, when we lose sight of the fact that we are desired by the one whom we desire. You see, when we lose sight of the fact that we are desired by God, and that God is the source of our deepest longings, or the only one who can fulfill our deepest longings, what happens is we're going to allow ourselves to become debased and manipulated. What do I mean by this? Well, if I don't remember, if I lose sight of the fact that I'm desired by God, that God loves me unconditionally, what's going to happen is I'm going to try to seek out ways to prove that I'm desirable. And I'm going to do that through means that are other than God. And those other means are going to manipulate me. So, for example, think of the way in which people in our society will manipulate us, saying, yes, we love you, we accept you, so long as you wear these things, or you have these types of homes and cars, or you do these certain types of activities, then you're lovable, then you're acceptable. See, all of a sudden, we have to do things. We're being manipulated by a group of people in order to be desirable. God doesn't play these types of games with us. That's the good news of the gospel. God loves us unconditionally. God loves us so much that he came into our human condition and died for us. That's how much he loves us. So he doesn't try to manipulate us. Instead, he just comes at us completely loving us. Now, I know some people are going to object and say, no, no, Father Brian, God is every bit as manipulative as society. God gives us these commandments, remember? He says, you have to do these things, you have to act these ways, you have to worship me if you want to get to heaven, if you want to be desirable. That's not at all. That's a misunderstanding of the commandments. You see, the commandments aren't God's way of saying, do this and I'll love you and I'll accept you. That's a misunderstanding. Rather, God loves us unconditionally. The commandments are God's way of saying, do you love me in return? You know, think of the way in which he turns to Simon Peter and says, Simon, Peter, do you love me? Uh, this is God's way of saying that to us. He says, do you love me? then follow my commandments. Because what he's asking us is, do you want to enter into this intimate union with me? I, the unchanging God, can't change to be like you. So if you want to enter into union with me, you need to become more like me. And this is who I am. So he reveals himself through the commandments and says, do these types of things and you will be in union with me. So it's not a matter of God saying, I don't love you. God, the only thing God says is, I love you. In fact, our whole existence is predicated on the fact that God loves us. That's why we exist, including the devil himself. But what happens is we can tend to say, well, I don't want to do these things, so I'm going to reject this union with you. That's certainly what the devil does, and anybody in hell, certainly for that matter, is it's they choose to reject God. But it's not that God doesn't love them. God can do nothing but love. So when it comes to us, what we need to remember is that God loves us. And that's the source of our dignity, is the fact that we are loved by God. And then from there, we can say, do I love God in return? You see, when we make that move, all of a sudden we're free because nobody can manipulate us. You see, people can say, well, no, 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 you need to do these things to be cool. We say, no, I don't. I'm loved by God, and God is the ultimate longing of my heart, and it has nothing to do with this club that you're starting. Or people can't say, you know, buy these clothes and you'll be cool. No, no, I don't. 
God loves me, and God is the source of my deepest longing, and that's where my coolness comes from. That's where my dignity comes from, not from you telling me what to wear. There was a great article by a blogger, Joe Wickman. He was, he's a father, and he was reflecting on this whole Miley Cyrus situation, saying, how do I protect my children? And he came to the conclusion that I need to protect my children from this manipulation of our society that tells kids, if you don't do these things, if you don't act this way, if you don't have these clothes, then you're not cool. And he said, I need to protect my kids from that, and I'm going to do that by helping them to understand that their dignity doesn't come from these things. And so they're not going to have these clothes that are provocative and inappropriate because this is not appropriate to their dignity. Rather, they're going to have clothes, I might have to shop harder to find them, that are going to uphold their dignity and show that their dignity isn't about, you know, flashing a pair of pants that says booty on the behind or something like that. But instead, it's about being in a relationship with God. Now, he didn't quite put it in those words, but he did say that their dignity comes from something more, something deeper, rather than these external displays of human sexuality. I think it's important for us to remember that, that our dignity comes from the way in which God sees us, not the way in which men see us.